point that whatever you die upon is what you shall be raised upon. So let your last deed be your best one. And the story goes as follows. There was a brother who came overseas. And he came to seek a bachelor's degree in any field. And the natural climate was that this was the first time he got freedom from his family. In his society, people are very religious, very practicing. He couldn't have the fun that he wanted to have. So he comes to a place like England. He's in a free mixing university. In a society where no girl looks at you, in fact, there are no girls in your class, now all of a sudden they're sitting next to you. And you can actually find an excuse to talk to them. Hey, can I borrow a pen? Hey, can I borrow some paper? And conversation becomes very easy. And now that you have a foreign accent, oh my God, you're fit enough for them. And this was the reality that he went through, that he came from a foreign land, and this attraction hit him right away. The initial stages were that he'd just go out for lunch, he'd just go out for meetings, and that is how life continued. He never actually committed zina. One day, though, he went to a party, and he committed zina. Out of, you know, pure emotion, he committed zina. And when he was done, he just lay there thinking, I have just ruined myself. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go. He didn't have any close friends that could guide him. He knew that the only place that this guidance that he had known was back in his hometown. He booked a ticket back to Saudi Arabia where he was from. And on his way, he had a stopover in the city in the country of Qatar. While he's in Qatar, he goes to the musalla and he's just crying. And you'll see that this is one of the least, most awkward situations that you'll have. You can think about when you're with people and there's this awkward silence and it's really weird. What do you do in that situation? What becomes even more awkward is when you see a grown man crying like a baby. He's crying like a baby. What do you do in that situation? One of the students of Shaykh Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, he saw this man. And he goes up to this man and says, oh man, why are you crying? What's wrong? And he explains to him the situation that I committed zina and I've destroyed myself. And the only way I can get rid of this pain is if I go back and have the hudud implemented on me. This is the only way I will be purified. The student calms the man down and he says, look, don't do anything rash. Let's go back to Riyadh together and we'll deal with the situation. They head back to Riyadh and the man is still crying throughout the whole journey. He feels really bad for what he has done. The student says, look, we've arrived in Riyadh. Go spend the night at home. I will call you in the morning. Just make sure you don't do anything. Don't do anything. Just wait till I call you. The next morning, the student calls Sheikh bin Baz. And he asks Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah, ya Sheikh, you know, this is what happened. I met this man. He committed zina. And he feels that the only way he can be purified is if he has the hudud implemented on him. Sheikh bin Baz says, tell this man not to turn himself in. But rather, the sin has been hidden from the people, continue to hide it. Rather, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn yourself to the Qur'an. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be your guide. So this is what the shaykh says to the student. The student calls this man up. Let's give him a name now. His name was Ahmad. He tells Ahmad, look, the shaykh says, don't turn yourself in. Death is the easy way out. This pain and suffering will not be taken away from that act. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want this from you. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to rectify your ways, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is when that pain and suffering will be taken away. That is what Ahmad decides to do. A couple of days go by, he starts reading the Quran, he starts praying in the masjid, and he says that I've never missed a single salah in the masjid since that event took place. This continues for about two weeks. Now this student, he disappeared from the life of Ahmed. There was no contact between him. And then one day, he notices that he has a missed call from Ahmed. He says, later on, I'll give him a call. Another couple of days go by, and Ahmed's house is calling now. His home number is showing up on the sheikh's phone five, six times. The student calls the house back, and he says, Assalamu alaikum, how are you guys doing? What's going on? And they say, we need to speak to you. Ahmed needs your help. And he says, definitely. I'll come over and see you tonight after Isha. He prays Isha, heads over to the house. And he sees that something just isn't right. That you can walk into a place, no one will say anything, but you can see it from their faces. 
You can see it from their sights that something just isn't right. He goes to the father and he says, Salaamu Alaikum. He says, Wa Alaikum As Salaam. He says, I don't even know what to say to you, but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because I know if it hadn't been for you, this wouldn't have happened. And the student's thinking, what did I do? So he says, you know, well, what happened? What are you talking about? And he says, let me show you. He says, Ahmed went and prayed Salat al-Isha tonight. And he came back and he came to pray his sunnahs. And he was in his room for a really, really long time. And we went to seek him out. We didn't know what had happened to him. But I want to show you. He took the student to Ahmed's room. And there Ahmed was in sajda. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life away at that time. And that is how he passed away. This is the story of an individual, not who was righteous, but this man committed zina, one of the biggest sins in Islam. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life away. And inshallah, when he's resurrected, that's the deed he's going to be resurrected on, making such that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why when it comes to pain and suffering, pain and suffering only becomes negative if it creates a barrier between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it becomes positive. Pain becomes positive, a motivation for you when it brings you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what every individual who's going through pain and suffering needs to realize. That this point of pain and suffering is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish you. But rather this is a calling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. And this is one of the wisdoms